This is a replica of a Citroën traction that I'd made in LEGO Technic. And today, I will show you how I design it. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started with the beginning of the project. After making my Citroën 2CV and the Mary, I wanted to build more iconic car with 1 to 15 scale. That is why I have created the Peugeot 205 GTI, but I wanted also to complete my product line of the Citroëns by making the legendary Citroën traction. The first things to do was to scale the model by looking on the different blueprints and choose the original model and so the dimension of the wheels. I have chosen the Traction 11B in standard wheelbase with the curved trunk for beautiful reason in the original color which were black. So the original model will be a 9055 black 11B Traction which is also the same my father owned. What a coincidence. With that model in mind, I scaled the LEGO model by building a row frame to place the wheels. Speaking of the wheels, I have considered the 43mm tire because of the narrow width, the same as my 2CV and the Mary for instance. But in fact, the traction tire are bigger than the 2CV one, so I chose the 49mm tire which is surprisingly at a correct scale and chose the narrow width version which was released not so long ago by LEGO. Ok, so I have the four wheels placed on the chassis in the correct position. Then I needed to build the different elements around this to start having a raw bodywork and some function. I start with the front drive train and the engine to place it and see then how many space I have to build the bodywork. The front drive train is made using the build hub with CV join which drive a central shaft without differential because of the available space. Of course, no suspension either. Then, this draft shaft drive a 12 to 12 T bevel gearing to place the rotation axis aligned with the engine, which will be driven by the same gear. Picking up the engine, it is made of course in a lovely green color and have four cylinders, sorry, no 15.6 here, because of the available room. This engine was not easy to design because it needs to be very compact because again, available space under the hood. And so, I used the technique of the crankshaft which is made with some 1x1 one one plate which will collide with the 2L red axle with bushes to make it move and simulate the piston. It is of course not very accurate but enabled me to have a very compact solution. As I wanted to have the engine in green, I have to take care of the part I use. That is why I use mostly this connector over this one which is very expensive. Then. The engine also powered a fan with a rubber band on the end of the crankshaft. The trick here is that I drive directly the fan by its housing and so enable me to use this propeller over this one which were too big. Then the engine is put on the car with the Technic Axle 1.5 connector also called the Technic Pole Reverser which enable me to place the engine half stud lower than a regular connection for instance with gearing 12 and 20. That is why I use a couple of gear of 12 and 12. Yes, I said half stud. Be prepared to hearing a lot of this sentence because all the bodywork is made uses this technique. All these tricks enable me to place the engine as low as I can and to build it in a very compact way to avoid the collision with the hood. So, I can have a working draft drain, engine and functional hood. At this point, I have the engine placed so I start making some elements of the bodywork like the hood, fenders and the front grille and then I design the other functional elements like the steering but I will just talk about steering first and we will talk about the big part then, the design. So, the steering is connected to both the steering wheel and the end of God on the roof. By starting from the steering wheel, it drives a universal join, then an axle with a small lever, and this small lever is connected to the left knuckle and enable to make it rotate. Then, the motion is bring to the right knuckle using a connecting rod under the chassis. You surely see the 16 tooth gear near the U-John, it mesh with another 16 gears and the 20 which is an axle which goes on the hog through the center of the chassis. To finish, a bevel gear brings the motion vertically to the hog on the roof which can be removed. 
You can note that I use a strange connector to fix a beam underneath the roof with a half stud offset. It is because the hog shaft threw the front seats which were placed in a half stud offset for scale accuracy. And so I use this connector on the roof to attach the bearing of the shaft to the roof. That's all for the function. We will talk about the big part of this build, the design. Okay, I will not explain how to design a complete bodywork. I have made a series of videos on the Western Star truck, which explain well how the design and how in which order. I just sum up here some important points to get a good design for me. Paying attention to how homogeneous a smooth and design is, which means that when you squint your eyes, nothing has to pop up in a bad way. For instance, this is bad, this is good. The second thing is to pay attention to the treatment of the surface, with typically the orientation of the element, for instance the panel, beams and connectors, but also the global finish of the surface with the colored pin, holes and the detail. Last thing is about the scale and the perception of the proportion. When you scale down something, you have to pay attention to not reproduce at 100% accuracy the model if it leads to a strange looking or strange construction. Sometimes, it is better to stretch a bit the proportion or the perception of the proportion to fit a nice construction or nice detail to have the cleanest look. Of course, all these things have to be made with the compromise you have to do with the parts you have, their price, the color, the function, the build experience and the goal of the model. Ok, I thought that I will not explain but I think it's a good to recap some time to better understand why a design is made in a specific way over another. Let's talk about the design solution of this car. First, half stud. Half stud everywhere. Why? Because at this scale, the stud grill is too big to reproduce the correct proportion or sometimes I need to offset a bit the construction to have the correct proportion or, if you will follow well, the perception of the proportion according to the build. For instance, the wall center of the car, is, including the door and the rocker panel, is in fact built with a half stud offset. It enables me to have the correct fit on the front and rear door relatively to the hood and the fenders, but also place correctly the front seats regarding the steering wheel. For that, I use half stud offset connector, that is why you can see the center of rotation of the door is not aligned with the up pillar, which is fixed to the roof. To hide this difference, I use a till assembly that I fix in half stud offset with half pins. You can note also that I use this new piece to have a rounded head on the assembly which looks nicer to me. Less detail on the door, I use the sport ice skate accessories to make the handle, but if you know the Fiat 500 from LEGO, you know this technique. Let's talk about the front of the model, which is very important to be recognizable. For instance, I use massively the elbow pieces, which is basically a 90 degrees connector, but bring a smoother design by avoiding the big angle and the hole of the regular connector, especially here, as they are quite visible in the fender. Speaking on the fender, you can see that I use the binocular baroque eyes in black to fill this space inside the elbow pieces, which cannot be fit with a 1x1 beam because of the collision. I use also the elbow pieces to create the two parts of the front grille, which is a bit angle, but I do not want to just use the connector with all because they will be visible and not very nice. That is why I use the small handle which is connected with a jumper plate. Despite that the jumper have a sharp edge, the only stud on the top brings nice detail to the grille and enable to attach a grille mascot. Near that you can see a rubber beam which is used to fix the two panels of the hood. Again, another solution can be designed with connectors but involve visible hole. That is why I choose this part which I know with limit the available color swapping of this vehicle because the rubber part is only available in black. In the center of the double panel hood, we can see an assembly which has the goal to fill the empty space with a combination of Technic panels, connector, cone and bar. More interesting, this assembly is fixed half stud higher than the hood to avoid having a flat surface. It is a great example of the perception of the proportion over 100% accuracy. 
it is not accurate here if you compare with the original model, but it is the best solution I came up with to represent to the curved hood near the windshield. We are moving on the rear part now, first with the rear fenders, which are made in the same way as the front with flexible axle and mini beam. But the attachment point is different as I have less spaces. That is why I used again a rubber beam to enable the fixing, but without constraint too much the fender in order to have the correct curve. The rear part has been the most complicated to do, especially to represent the curve of the roof at the back. I have made it by using panels which make the visual connection with the fender, angle connector on the side and flexible axle with beam to reproduce the large curve. The same technique as in the fender. It was possible because this assembly goes in the panel to be easily secured and that I used an assembly on the middle which is composed of many articulate connectors to start reproducing the shape. It can look a bit weird in terms of homogeneity, but again, the best option I could come up with. The cover truck is made with regular panel, but teal and wooden brick on the top, because no other part in LEGO Technique fit. So, I prefer to use brick design for that part. This is the same reflection on the bumper, which is bricky design instead of connector design, to avoid the many hole and limited option in angle. It is more fragile, but better look, as always, a compromise. We have nearly finished with the design, let's talk about the roof, which seems to be not interesting, but has some things to teach us. It is made classically with beam and panels, first because it enables to have a rounded shape on the side to avoid the sharp edge, and then because it enables me to use the 3x7 panels on the front connected with the new quarter ellipse to have the reduction of the width near the windshield. Indeed, this car has the particularity to have a width which is variable from the front to the rear. The beginning is easily noticeable with the double panel hood which forms an angle, but then it connects to the windshield which is here in 11 stud width to then expand in width again to be in 13 stud in width near the B pillar, which is made using this panel. That is why the front door has to be little angle to fit the width and fits well visually with the windshield line which goes to the bottom which are also iconic on this car. It is for me what makes the traction recognizable because if you make a hood that expands in width then to connect to a boxy rear part it took like as many other cars from the previous era which is basically all carriage design. We have finished with the design. I will just mention something that if you do not see, so I have made a good job, the colored pin. I have carefully choose and adapt the construction style to avoid the blue pin, which can distract the reading of the design. It was not very difficult, but have to be taken into consideration from the very beginning of the build, as it affects all the way the things are attached. So, what to conclude? Well, I like this model a lot, not only because I am a Citroën lover, of course, it has its drawback and compromise, as usual, but I think the result is very good in terms of how smooth is the design. I use now this construction to show how I progress over the year on the treatment of the surface, the homogeneity, the detail and the perception of the proportion. I definitely should write a book about that as I talk about it in every video. For instance, if you take my Citroën 2 TV in 1 to 15 scale, which were mainly designed to be as cheap as possible, you can see that the treatment of the surface is quite raw. There is a lot of visible blue pin and there are many assemblies which can be modernized now. Of course, it makes a difference between a 1000 part build and only 700, but I think that I could make a better version today, now I have more skill, insight and critical eyes on my works. I think it can be the conclusion, knowing what you want to build, what you can accept as a compromise, being self-critical and open will lead you simply to improve your skills. Take care, play well, bye.